Hi everybody, welcome back to my messy workshop for the third video in the series on receiving 10 gigahertz EME signals with a small TV dish and an inexpensive LNB. Uh, see the uh, first video for information on the overall system and the second one where I talked about polarization of EME signals. This time I'd like to talk a little bit about noise measurements. Uh, measuring the difference in noise between what we call a cold sky, which is virtually the whole sky on uh, 10 gigahertz, as long as you're not pointing at the sun or the moon. Or the, moon. Uh, the difference in noise between cold sky and, say, the sun uh, can be used to uh, optimize various portions of your system, uh, including positioning the LNB or dish feed correctly to get uh, opt optimum performance out of the dish uh, that you have and the uh, LNB that you have. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the system of how I go about making those measurements. I'll show you some uh, cold sky and sun and ground noise measurements that I have made in the past. Um, and uh, I will also add, although I don't have it in this uh, video, I don't have it to show you, I can see about 0.2 dB of moon noise uh, with this system. So I do see a little bit of uh, moon noise. It's probably not enough to use moon noise for accurately tracking the moon but it is visible and I see about 5 dB of uh, cold sky to sun noise uh, at the time that I measured maybe a little bit now, more now because the solar flux is higher and about 4 dB of cold sky to uh, ground noise so again noise measurements can be used to optimize uh, your system including the uh, LNB placement uh, relative to the uh, focal point of the dish and for uh, perhaps other purposes optimizing other things if you were using some sort of a uh, of a uh, dish feed, not an LNB, but a dish feed and a, and a preamp or LNA, then uh, you could certainly use it to uh, try and optimize noise figure and, and other uh, portions of your system, other aspects of your system. So that's it. We'll jump right into it. And this will probably be the last uh, video of the series for a while. It's winter now here in Maine. There's a foot of snow on the ground. It's cold and it's windy and it's nasty. And so I won't be spending a lot of time outside working with the dish or running back and forth between the dish and the house and tracking in snow and mud and all that stuff that I have to clean up. So, uh, next spring I might do some other videos on this series uh, when I get back to uh, playing with this stuff. But uh, this will probably be the last one in this series for the winter. However, I do plan to get back to work on building my 10 gig terrestrial system this winter and also a beacon that I'm working on. And I will probably do some videos on those uh, projects as well as some stuff that's not related to 10 gigs. Every once in a while I like to do a simple uh, uh, project just to, uh, to have something fun and interesting to do that uh, doesn't make me think uh, quite as much. <laughs> this uh, 10 gig stuff has been quite the learning curve. Okay, so we'll get right into it here. Enough of listening to me uh, here in the introduction. So here is an example of uh, some noise measurements I made using SpectraView. Uh, a few months ago, back when the weather was nice. Uh, so when SpectraView is running, it's kind of like a strip chart recorder. Uh, this is just a saved image, but if the program were live and running, this whole uh, graph area here would be slowly scrolling from right to left with uh, the current time way over here at the right-hand edge and going back in time as you proceed to the left. So um, let's start here in the center. I had the dish pointed at just a random part of the sky. Pretty much the whole sky, if you're not looking at the sun or the moon, the whole sky is pretty much called cold sky or, or quiet at, uh, at 10 gigs. So that's your reference noise level. The lowest noise level you're going to see is pointed somewhere into the open sky. You don't want to have any trees or buildings or anything like that within the... Uh, within the uh, beam width of your dish uh, when you're making these measurements you want to be looking at just an open area of sky uh, so you see here uh, each the way I have this adjusted um, each of these uh, divisions here going up each of these lines is half a half a DB so sky is the quietest level uh, back before I pointed the dish at the sky, a couple minutes earlier, I had it pointed at the sun. So you can see the sun noise here is several dB higher 
than the uh, sky noise. In fact, if you uh, count these divisions up and, uh, and estimate for the partial uh, divisions here, I was seeing about 5 dB of sun noise relative to the uh, sky noise level. And then over here I pointed the dish down at the ground to uh, measure ground noise and that's about 4 dB above sky noise. So this noise measurement is very useful in determining, uh, verifying what the performance of your system is and also when you're trying to do things like adjusting the position of the LNB or the dish feed relative to the uh, dish. You want to optimize these these noise levels or, or maximize the difference between uh, your sky noise uh, reference and sun noise and, and ground noise. Uh, so ignore some of these settings uh, down here. Uh, these were not optimum and I'll show you better ones uh, later on but all of these settings down here were really not optimum at this time. Uh, this was kind of early on in my uh, experimentation and learning how to how to do this. And as a result of these settings not being optimum, you see there's some uh, jitter in the uh, in the noise measurements here. This is not a, a really straight, smooth line. It's kind of jittering, varying up and down a little bit. That can be smoothed out to some degree and get uh, a little more accurate readings by using optimum settings, which I just didn't have at this time. So uh, I guess that's it for this segment and I'll go over to the computer where I have this running live and show you some tricks of how to get this set up and working, get SpectraView set up and working with HDSDR and some other essentials that you need to be able to run this program. Okay, so here we are over in the ham shack. There's HDSDR running, uh, which is the SDR receiver for my uh, 10 gig LNB EME receive setup. See the first video in the series for more information on uh, the overall setup. And here's the uh, strip chart recorder program Spectra View that I like to use for making noise measurements. Now, first of all, there is one trick to getting Spectra View to run. Uh, you need to have the correct version of Microsoft Visual C++ redistributable on your system. Uh, there's many versions of this, you may already have several installed, but the one you need for SpectraView uh, is the 2010 x86 version, 10.0.40219. When you download it, it may have a .325 on the end as well. So 10.0.40219.325. It's the Microsoft Visual C++ 2010 x86 redistributable that you need to make uh, SpectraView run. Regardless, now the x86 is a 32-bit version. Regardless whether you're running on a 32 or 64-bit system, you need this 32-bit uh, version for SpectraView. I am running on Windows 10 64-bit and uh, this is the magic one that you need to uh, make this work. And I'll try and provide a link down below to uh, where you can get that from. So that's the first trick to getting SpectraView up and running. The other thing is you somehow need to get audio from HDSDR into SpectraView. And I think I covered this in an earlier video, but uh, I'll just go over it again quickly. What you need is a virtual audio cable. There's several of them out there. I like to use uh, one called VB Audio or VB Cable. It's free and it works fine for me, so you just download, download these and install them and you'll find them in your sound devices for both recording and uh, playback. Um, yeah, there it is right there. So uh, how to set that up is just in HDSDR, first of all, um, set the uh, bandwidth. You want to make sure the output bandwidth is set as wide as you can go, so 192,000 hertz. Let me just uh, get rid of that. And then for sound card, select your virtual cable. Here I've got uh, VB cable, VB audio cable A for the output. And uh, that's all there is to it. Now over in Spectra View, you want to go to your sound card in setup and make sure you select the uh, same uh, cable. Cable A, uh, VB Audio Cable A output. Set the sample rate to 192,000. 
the bandwidth limit I should have mentioned over an HD SDR I'll go back there in a second uh, let, me, let me just go back there now over an HD SDR I uh, right clicked on uh, on the mode I'm using upper sideband and selected uh, a nice wide bandwidth um, regardless what you put in here and this needs to be less than half of the um, of the 192,000 uh, sample rate so I put in 90 kilohertz or uh, you know 90,000 Hertz but regardless of that the widest audio I can actually get out of HD SDR is about 85 uh, kilohertz here before it uh, before it starts to uh, drop off so um, you're at around 85 kilohertz there is where it's starting to uh, to tail off so uh, over here in order to limit this to the actual audio I have, for bandwidth limit I put in 85,000 Hz and I put the center frequency to uh, half of that. Uh, so that's the sound card in setup for uh, for uh, Spectra View. Uh, let's see, I don't think there was... Uh, just make sure sound card is selected for input device. All set there. Um, there's some settings down here on the bottom. Um, one of these uh, center frequency doesn't seem to have remained set exactly. What's, uh, let's see what's going on with that. Go back to the sound card in setup here. Hmm. Looks right in there. Anyway, uh, normally that'd be 42,500 instead of 45,000, but it's, it's working this way for now, so we'll leave it alone. Uh, and there's some settings over here in order to get a nice smooth line. See this this line is relatively smooth across here. It's not uh, not going up and down a lot. In order to get that, you probably have to fiddle with these settings. What I've found to work well for me is 32 for the FFT average. I leave the smoothing at zero, and I choose a 65 uh, 536 FFT size here. And you also want to choose something for the vertical scale. Uh, I've got half a dB per division, which works well with my system. It's enough for, uh, for everything I want to do. One thing you might have to do when you start this up, um, you start it by uh, hitting this uh, start button. Of course, it's already started uh, here. If you don't see the line on the, uh, on the display, you might have to hit this auto scale button, and that will cause it to... Uh, to uh, center up on the line and put it somewhere down near the uh, the bottom of the display here. So do that on Cold Sky and adjust it so the uh, the line, whatever color you have, I think white is the default, and I've changed it to green, is uh, down near the uh, or the other way around. But anyway, uh, down near the bottom of the display here on Cold Sky, and then whatever you measure, be it sun noise or ground or whatever, will be a, uh, a higher reading on here. Um, so that's. Um, that's really all there is to it. Make you want to make sure you're in um, in continuum mode here. Uh, just click on this continuum tab to get this uh, this type of display in uh, Spectra View. And uh, so that's how the system works. Just make sure you have the right um, the right uh, Microsoft C++ redistributable involved uh, installed and a virtual cable. Set that up in HD SDR and in here. Set up a few settings and you're uh, ready to make noise measurements. Okay, a couple of other notes I uh, I wanted to add here. You might notice here in Spectra View today there's some variation in the uh, in the noise level. Usually this is a very flat line when it's just pointed at uh, at some random point in the sky like it is now. But it's snowing today, and somehow the uh, snow is uh, is causing the noise level to vary by exactly what mechanism or what effect, I don't know. But this noise level is very dependent on the snow intensity today. And uh, I've been wanting to work on this video for a few weeks, and I just haven't had a chance. This weekend is the first chance I've really had to do it. Of course, it's uh, snowing. It's been snowing for two days, and they say it's going to snow for two more days, so... Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the video anyway, uh, and I'll just ask you to believe me when, uh, trust me when I say that this is usually a pretty flat line and it doesn't have these variations in it. Uh, I'm interested in how the uh, snowstorm is doing this, and I'll have to do some research and uh, try and figure that out. So that's one thing. The other thing I wanted to mention is to uh, make sure you get these uh, these levels about right. 
you might see here that this uh, this noise level is between uh, minus 39 and a half and minus 40 dB um, into the uh, into the program here. You want to make sure you don't run out of uh, run out of headroom on anything. Even though you're not really using a sound card, I think there's a limit to what uh, what audio level you can pipe through uh, the various software and the uh, virtual cable. Uh, I found uh, when I was making noise measurements that if I got up somewhere in the range of around minus 15 on this, that the the it seemed to be non-linear anymore, and I wasn't getting accurate readings. So what I like to do is keep this down somewhere below, below minus 30. Right now it's closer to minus 40. And the way you adjust this is with the uh, volume slider up in HDSDR. You can adjust this uh, this volume slider here up or down, and that will change the um, the audio level uh, into the virtual cable and that will change the audio level into um, spectra view so uh, just make sure you don't have that set too high if you get up uh, you know too high um, you'll start getting into non-linearities or just run out of uh, run out of uh, room altogether uh, and so you'll just uh, your readings will be compressed and you won't get accurate noise readings I did run into that I wasn't getting accurate readings for a while, and I readjusted things down to a lower level, and and I got you know a couple dB more uh, sun noise and and ground noise compared to a uh, cold sky. So uh, just watch out uh, for that little pitfall. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed the three videos in this series so far on receiving 10 gigahertz EME signals with an LNB and a simple TV dish. As I mentioned earlier, there probably will be more in this series to come next summer when it's warm and I'm out uh, working on this stuff again. Meanwhile, I do want to get back to work on the 10 gig beacon and some other uh, related projects, and so I'll probably show you some of what I'm learning uh, in that process as I go along, and hopefully I'll be able to show you what I end up with for a beacon eventually, uh, assuming I, I eventually arrive at something I'm happy with. I've already had a couple of... Uh, learning experiences on how not to do that. Uh, so, more videos to come on uh, this subject uh, later, and meanwhile uh, on some other uh, subjects uh, during the winter. So I hope you all come back and uh, check out some of the other stuff uh, as it uh, comes along here. Thanks for watching.